Welcome to Conversations with Zaki Baroudi, uh, with your host Zaki Baroudi. And like I always want to give a shout out to my biological family, what's going on, to the Universe African People's Organization family, what's happening, and to the New Life Evangelistic Center family headed by Reverend Wright. Uh, keep up the great work, and a shout out to our cameraman Bob. On that note, we'll have another great show uh, this evening with me. It's a lovely, intelligent, and uh, very involved uh, young lady uh, who hails from University City and in fact is a member of the University City School Board and that's none other than Miss Christine Hendricks. Welcome to Conversations with Zaki Baruti. Thank you for having me. Okay, and how have you been? I've been great. That's a good thing. Uh, as we begin the program, I always like for my audience to know who my guest is. So tell the audience a little bit about yourself, wherever you want people to know about Christine uh, Hendricks and uh, different hats that you may hold as an activist in our community. Okay, so definitely. So Christine Hendricks, I'm a mother of three boys. Um, Mason, happy birthday. Um, and let's see. So right now, of course, I'm the vice president of the University City School Board, as well as a junior a Bayard Rustin Fellow with the Fellowship of Reconciliation. I'm also a co-chair of a Truth Telling Project. Right now, uh, we, are, we have a podcast that stems from that, where I'm a co-host of the We Stay Woke podcast. And uh, just, you know, a Ferguson activist who still is trying to stay involved and try to keep myself busy in how we can uplift our, our people. Okay, that's great. And uh, as I had introduced you early on, you're a member of the University City School Board. You said yes. vice president. Yes. Uh, how many members on the school board? Seven. Seven. Yes. And how long have you been a member of the University school, uh, City so, School Board? So I am ending my second year of my second term. And uh, so what is that's about four going into five years. Oh, okay. So how has that experience been for you, especially as a young person? You don't see a whole lot of young people in those kinds of positions. Well, I think now you're starting to see more young people get involved uh, because we have a board member who's about 11, 11 years younger than me, if is you can it? believe that. Yes, she is. And, uh, and who is that? Uh, Chelsea Addison, and oh. she's a, another black woman, another strong black woman who is um, about educating our youth. And so, um, yeah, yeah, I think just I got involved because I didn't, I didn't see people like me on the school board. So. Okay, on that note, uh, as... And we're going to get into some of the other subjects that, uh, you know, we plan on talking about reparations, what have you. But um, what would you say have been your accomplishments or what has been accomplished uh, while you have for those four and how many years now? Almost five. five Almost yeah. five years. Mm -hmm. What can you point to for our people that uh, you see something concretely on the positive side occurring in U City? Awesome. So, well, we hired a new superintendent when I first began. I think in my second year, this new superintendent came on, Dr. Sharonica Hardin-Bartley, um, another phenomenal black woman who brought in Learning Reimagined, which is a new way of thinking about educating and how we educate our children. Uh, it's less of a Western philosophy and more of more in line with like a, Ma a Maori philosophy of educating the whole child, um, personalizing and humanizing and problematizing, giving children real problems that they can solve, uh, you know, humanizing it so that we understand that our children come to us um, with certain bags and, you know, we have to accept them as they are and educate them as they are, uh, personalize to, you know, differentiate the different kinds of learning because not all of our children are on the same level. So I think that's an amazing program. It's in its uh, toddler stage now, and I think it's beginning to take hold. Another thing that we're doing uh, that I think falls in line with that philosophy is uh, restorative justice. Uh, just uh, this past month, our school board passed a resolution to humanize school climate through a restorative practice and social emotional learning, which is a really long title uh, and way of being able to say that we're invested in our school district, our children, making sure that they're learning, uh, making sure that we're, uh, we're ending that school to prison pipeline um, and that we are focused on education and like really loving our children. We, our children, we go to an 83 percent African-American school. And so we need to move with the urgency of now and we need to do things differently and uh, different from what we've been doing before. So you're saying the school district is 83 percent black student population? Yes. Out of what is the total student population? It's um, in the, I think, right around 3,000, and that's between, is that, I think it's six schools if you include the preschools. So you have preschool, uh, the four elementary schools, and then middle, so seven, so the middle and high so school. So what is your total number of uh, teachers, approximately? 
with white to black. Yes. So we could definitely do a lot better. I don't have those exact numbers. I know that we have been um, doing more hiring of African American, especially as it relates to women and actually African American men too, because we know how important it is to have more African American men in our buildings. And even if they're not always in our classrooms, uh, I think we're doing um, as much as we can do, you know, within the confines of employment uh, to make sure that we're diversifying our staff. Yeah, and I ask that. I've, I've written a booklet uh, called Challenge Part 2 where I cite university city statistically, uh, I'd say it's too many white teachers teaching our and children actually, disproportionately. Yeah, oh, for you sure. Know, uh, and that's everywhere. And there are so many problems. But one of the things that I can say that University City is at least doing well is we acknowledge that we have a problem. The other side of that is, is that we have to have creative solutions to get African Americans into the profession of teaching. It's not enough to just say uh, we want black teachers. We have to find creative pathways um, for black folks to achieve that. Absolutely. Now, in terms of uh, beyond uh, University City uh, School District, uh, I know you were very involved in uh, Ferguson. Yes. And you had made mention um, uh, the other organization of which we'll be talking about dealing with reparations. Uh, why did you get involved in Ferguson, number one? And uh, out of uh, that the whole Ferguson uprising, do you feel there were any positive outcomes? So I got involved in Ferguson because I couldn't stay in my house anymore watching the young people take to the streets and rise up. And so uh, the other side of that is um, it was a little more personal for me. Uh, Leslie McSpadden and I went to high school together. She didn't graduate, but she went to Ledoux High School for a while. And so it was personal. It was like this could have been my son. And so um, on day three, we went out there. We had an interaction with the police. And I guess, as they say, we never left. <laughs> and uh, as far as uh, positive outcomes from... Well, on uh, this whole load's positive outcome for the other side of the break. We're going to take a quick break right now. I want to thank God for each and every one of you that are supporting NLEC TV, the work of the New Life Evangelistic Center, and making it all possible so we can have conversations with Saki on the air along with the other programming that's on NLEC TV. Not only we discover that at 24.2, but I actually watch it on my cell phone, a, a very special app that we have of NLEC TV, and you can just pull it up. It's so easy that everybody can watch it anywhere. So wherever I travel, I can be watching this program and other programs. Now, all this is possible only because of caring people like you that are sharing those much-needed tax-deductible gifts at this time with the New Life Evangelistic Center. We have a lot of things that are unfolding at this moment. We're continuing to help multitudes of people, not only throughout Mid-America, but as far away as India and Africa and other locations around the world. And we really do need your help. After they closed down 1411 Locust, we're continuing to help the homeless directly out on the streets every week. We're out in the mayor's window distributing bus tickets and other direct supplies. We have regular events out in front of 1411 Locust. And we're working actually through the legal, the mediation, the advocacy, and getting prayer warriors to pray that we can reopen 1411 Locust in the near future. But we need your involvement at this particular moment. And your gifts to the New Life Evangelistic Center make such a big difference. You can send that to P.O. Box 473, St. Louis, Missouri, that's 63166. Or you can give online through the PayPal system at newlifeevangelisticcenter.org or NLECSTL. I ask you to continue to stand with us right now as we continue to bring many programs like Conversation with Saki to you, but we need your help. If you can't receive NLEC TV on channel 24.2 on your TV, you can watch us on your home computer or laptop anywhere in the world. Simply type in NLEC TV, then select NLEC TV support, and click on the small NLEC TV on the right of the menu bar. Click on the play indicator to start the live programming, the same programming as 24.2. You can then enlarge the picture and enjoy your favorite programs like the NLEC Worship with Larry Rice, the Bernie Hayes Show, Experience the Benefits of Change with Pastor Burris, Conversations with Zaki Baruti, News and Views, and so much more. Can you hear the music of creation? 
NLEC TV is also available on all mobile devices such as smartphones and iPads. By getting the NLEC TV app, you can enjoy NLEC TV anywhere you go. Welcome back to Conversations with Zaki Baruti. In the studio with me is uh, Ms. Christine Hendricks, member of the University City School Board, also an activist. Uh, and on the other side, we were asking her uh, about Ferguson Uprising, why she was involved. And she was getting ready to make mention, uh, you know, I had asked the question, did you see any positive outcomes out of uh, the Ferguson Uprising? I, I, I saw some positive outcomes. I, I saw that um, more young people, more black people are more politically engaged now. They're paying attention to what's going on in politics and not just, you know, who's running for president, but who's running for school board, who's running for city council, who's running for committee man. You know, who are the people who actually um, affect your 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 neighborhood and your streets, you know, where your children go to school. So I think that's really important. I think it's super um, exciting that there's so many young people, people that are um, under 40, even people who are under 30, who are getting involved um, in politics and winning. Um, we have had some losses, but I, I still don't see those as being just complete negatives. I see that as being people actually getting out there and putting themselves on the line. And that's not just even here in St. Louis. You see that nationally with people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez or Ayanna Presley or any one of those new freshmen that uh, made it to the House, they, a lot made of them credit. Made it to the House of Representatives yes. for our people. Yeah, okay. a lot of them credit Ferguson for, for, for getting involved and being more active. Okay, then. And on that note, uh, as May mentioned, you were, as an activist, uh, mm -hmm. school board elected official, uh, you have another passion right now called yes. reparations. Yes. Okay, then. And uh, I appreciate the, uh, your passion for that. You know, it's the elderly community, we have always addressed reparations, but it's uh, like passing out the baton. got to keep it going forward until it makes it happen. First of all, define what is reparations in your viewpoint? So uh, reparations is the righting of a wrong um, with a formal apology uh, from, it's usually typically done from a government to um, a group of people. It's a right, it's a formal apology, um, a righting of a wrong, and it typically has a financial component to it. And it's about repairing and reconciling uh, that past harm. So on that note, uh, when we talk about reparations and your passion for reparations, I mean, uh, what group of people are you saying should re receive reparations? And uh, through what methodology and what process are you engaged in right now? Okay. So, uh, well, I mean, personally, I feel that anyone who has been um, harmed deserves reparations. But right now, specifically, we're focused on reparations for black Americans. And by black Americans, I mean descendants of enslaved Africans um, who were here in America. That's who we are primarily targeting. That's who our audience is. Uh, that's who we want uh, to raise money for, that's who we want to highlight. Um, so our methodology, uh, we know that the government owes, and we know that the government owes us trillions of dollars. And, you know, we don't believe that... Now, why do you say the government owe... Uh, well, that's like not the, my estimate. I'm not a mathematician. No, 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 no. I <laughs> was asking, in general, why are you saying that the government of the United States owe black people? So they, the government of the United States owes black people for their uh, complicity with the uh, Atlantic slave trade, uh, with uh, you know enslaved humans, um, even after slavery was over, uh, you know, uh, with like Jim Crow laws, the Thirteenth Amendment, the prison redlining. So it, it wasn't just it didn't just end with uh, slavery. Um, it was systematic and it stayed to the present day. So and we're talking about. Uh, White people, with the consent of the government, have just, you know, like in East St. Louis, like they came in and destroyed cities, towns, took... In know, 1917 or 1919. Correct. Okay. You right. know, so those are the kinds of things that um, had, there was, I think in 1919, there was also the... the East St. Louis race riot. The, the race riots. There was also like the Bloody Summer um, that started out in Chicago where white folks were rioting oh, yeah, and taking... Right. Um, you have Black Wall Street. So it, the, the oppression and the stealing of um, our bodies, our, our minds, our spirits, our, our wealth generationally did not end with slavery. And so, and our government really does not want to acknowledge that. And so 
we believe that our government should acknowledge it. However, if we can't get that acknowledgement, then um, the Four Truth and Reparations Project, which is with the Fellowship of Reconciliation, the Truth Telling Project, Restorative Justice Oakland Youth, um, and COBRA, and coming to the table. So it's a coalition of people, of, of organizations um, that that form um, the Four Truth and Reparations Project. Um, the whole Four Truth and Reparations. Um, and uh, so it's a grassroots reparations uh, project where we are working with the Fellowship of Reconciliation using their network of faith organizations. Um, so, you know, it can be Jewish, uh, Muslim, uh, Baha'i, and we want to provide toolkits for these faiths to talk about reparations in a spiritual way um, and to get their congregations to begin to understand what reparations is, to uh, donate to um, our organization, but also to uh, begin the process of um, donating to other grassroots organizations that will be in our network um, that we can uh, make sure are receiving the funds necessary. And those organizations would be, we would be targeting organizations that are doing the work of healing um, in the black community. On that note though, let me ask this. Uh, are there any historic precedents of reparations being given from a government to people? Well, yes. So we know that um, the Jewish people have been given reparations, I think, by our government, and we did not um, hold them in, in, you know, in the concentration camps. Um, the Native Americans in our country um, have been uh, given land uh, reparations. I think there's also talk of giving them more land in Oklahoma. I, not that that was necessary far enough for the injustices that they were served, but and then also the Japanese were repaired after um, they were put into internment camps after World War II. So our, there is a, um, a history, there's a precedent for it. They have not done it with black folks, um, but they do owe us. Um, and I think that, you know, especially with the 2020 election, and I think it was Marianne Williamson, I think she was like Oprah's guru, and uh, so she's been talking about reparations for a while anyway, and she entered into the president race and she, part of her platforms was reparations and it caught on like wildfire and everybody else started talking about and some that's form. Who? Her name is Marianne Williams. And uh, uh, that's a, Williams she's and a Democratic like nominee. I mean, Democrat. Yeah, she's so you, in the Democratic. Yeah, so you don't really hear a lot of. It's either right. Williams We're or looking, Williamson. Uh, yeah, we, we have to talk about it on the other side. We got to do a break, but okay. uh, that's interesting. I hope you're enjoying the Zakiya Baruti Show, and I thank God for each one of you that are praying and working with us to get back into the 1411 Locust Building, one of the greatest acts of discrimination in modern history, as we see a five-story facility shut down because neighbors didn't want to see those kind of people in the neighborhood, as they refer to them at. Those kind of people, as they refer to them at, are actually individuals that are made in the image of God, who Jesus said, as often you've done to the least of these, he said, even so you've done it unto me. As you share a gift of $10 or more with the New Life Evangelistic Center, you're not only helping New Life Evangelistic Center to get back into 1411 Locust Street, but you're helping so many of the hurting and the homeless in so many different ways. And as you share your gift, please request your copy of Through the Fire. It tells you the whole story of steps that were taken by the rich and powerful to shut down 1411 Locust. Now we're working to get back in there, and it will happen as you pray, as you get directly involved. So as you share your gift, be sure you ask for a copy of Through the Fire, and know that by giving, caring, and sharing at this time, you're helping so many people that are in need. And when they had come to the place called Calvary, there they crucified him. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Now from the sixth hour until the ninth hour, there was darkness over the land. And Jesus cried out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he said, It is finished, and bowing his head, he gave up his spirit. And when Joseph from Arimathea had taken the body of Jesus, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his new tomb, which he had hewn out of the rock. Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, 
All power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Welcome back to Conversations with Zaki Baruti. In studio with me is uh, the activist and lovely uh, intellectual Ms. Christine Hendricks, University of the School Board activist, as well as a member of a movement for reparations. On the other side, I was asking you in terms of um, reparations uh, for a group of people, and what else I was asking you? About Marianne Williamson, the, the, yeah. the 2020 presidential race. Well, so she had that in her platform, it kind of took off, it started trending on uh, like Twitter, whatever, the social media, and then all of a sudden you had people like Kamala Harris start talking about it, Cory Booker, uh, Bernie Sanders, who is not for reparations, he just wants more government programs. And I just want to say that reparations is not another government program. So that's not what we're talking about. And uh, reparations isn't just about money because they stole more than money from us. And so um, I think that, you know, I think it's great that we're having these conversations, and that's exactly what the Four Reparations Project um, aims to do, is we aim to hopefully create a culture where, um, where reparations specifically for black folks, descendants of slaves, where where that's a part of our culture, where it's, it's normalized. So to that end, I have in my hand uh, a magazine uh, fellowship, and, uh, and it has on the front cover reparations. And this is uh, a news argument for, for, for the organization called what now again? So it's the Fellowship of Reconciliation. It's one of the oldest Quaker organizations in our country. So they've kind of been on the, the forefront of uh, what it's like abolition and, you know, different things like that to deal with social justice and civil rights. Yeah, I know the Quakers have had a history for social justice. And I'm seeing in, on one of the pages that uh, it's a group picture, and these are some of the... Uh, Founders or the members, head members of the organization? No, so that's just kind of a, a random picture. Um, I know. So I mean, I was noticing a number of whites that yes. are supporting it. This, so uh, the Fellowship of Reconciliation, Quaker, they're Quakers, so they typically are white people. So yeah, the Fellowship of Reconciliation is the is the white folks, you know, because that's who's going to be giving reparations. And so um, they got to talk to their cousins. Um, and but the David Raglan, for instance, he is uh, he's the black guy in the picture. He's part of the um, Fellowship of Reconciliation. Out of first and David Raglan. Yeah. Oh, okay yeah. then. Yeah. Now, some people may say, uh, you hear that sometime in our community as well as outside, that's just a pipe dream as far as reparations. What would you say, what would be your response to that? I mean, I, I believe that people say that about every part of the civil rights movement. You know, they probably said that about integration. They probably said that about ending slavery, you know. So I say that it will be a pipe dream if we don't talk about it and go after it. And so I think that it's, I, I, want, I want to be liberated. I want to be free. And I think this is part of our liberation and our freedom. So I, I felt like it's something that we're owed, something that we should be determined to get for ourselves. Now, if anybody that's out there, and, and this is open to blacks and whites, everybody, anybody who uh, believes in uh, reparations, how would uh, am I correct on that? So the conver the conversation um, about reparations. I mean, people can have their conversations, but I think how reparations is going to be handled from the government to the people. I think that's a conversation that Black people need to have with each other. Um, the only thing that you know, white people can do in this form is agree that, yes, we should have them. Um, after that, it's not really up to them how we decide that we want to be made whole. Um, they can, when you, and especially when... I meant it, then, they could, you got all races that can support this cause. So, oh, definitely uh, okay. that can support this cause. We would hope that everyone would support this cause. It's a worthy cause of support, um, right. black people getting reparations. I think that um, even if you're, you know, Arab or, you know, Muslim or, you know, a different race, Chinese, I think you should be able to get on board with this and support it. <clears throat> so to that end, uh, if anybody's interested in uh, contacting, uh, you know, your movement, how would they get in contact? But hold that till our last, uh, we're going to take a break and we'll come back. Now you can take NLEC TV anywhere as you put the NLEC TV app on your iPhone or mobile device. NLEC TV is an innovative TV station that's on the cutting edge of community service. 
On NLAC TV, you'll discover wholesome family, community, renewable energy, and inspirational programming. Those needing energy assistance, food, clothing, or freedom from the cycle of homelessness will find that plus much more on NLEC TV. Now, you can receive NLEC TV by going to 24.2 on your television set or putting the NLEC TV app on your iPhone or mobile device. For further information, call 314-436-2424 or go to NLECSTL.org. That's NLECSTL.org. How important are St. Louis Metro passes to the needy? To provide stability and permanent change to the homeless, they need jobs. But how do they get transportation to look for work when they have no money? And when they find a job, how will they get there? Become a part of NLEC's Metro Pass program and help bring enduring change to a life. I have doctor's appointments that I have to attend, uh, going to seek jobs and putting in applications. I really would like you to understand the importance and the need for this ministry. And anything that you can do to keep this ministry going, please know that it is an extension of God's love. Hello, I'm Larry Rice, and I'm inviting you to join me daily on the New Life Facebook page. Something new, something exciting every day. So go to facebook.com forward slash New Life STL and discover what's happening on a daily basis as New Life Evangelistic Center begins to share with you a wide variety of subjects. I look forward to visiting you on the Facebook page. Remember, there's so much just waiting for you at that particular page. Welcome back to Conversations with Zaki Baruti in the studio with Ms. Ms. Christine Hendricks, University School Board member, as well as activist, and we've been discussing reparations. And on the other side, I was going to ask that uh, if anybody wanted to contact you to provide any type of support or what have you, how would they uh, get in contact with you? So sure. So we have a phone number, 314-301-9935. Uh, email is for reparations. Um, at gmail.com. Um, it's for reparations.org. If you want to go to our website, there's uh, places where you can donate. We're also we're on Instagram, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, and the Facebook handle is for truth and reparations. Now, again, you say that um, your, the local organizers here have began networking with other organizations across this country, as far as I know you may mention in COBRA which has been uh, one of the forefront of organizations advocating yes. uh, for uh, reparations. Yes. So that you have been on ground in terms of that movement. Definitely. So are there any planned public gatherings around the issue? Yes, thank uh, you so much for asking. So the, the first thing that we're doing is the Black Manifesto Revival, which will be in Atlanta, Georgia, uh, the weekend of May 2nd through the 5th. But we're also doing a, a national reparations convening um, for the fifth anniversary of the uprising in Ferguson. Um, and, you know, we're definitely working with uh, Cal and Mike um, around some events that we're doing in Ferguson, but we're also, you know, putting the call out and asking any other organizations, individuals who want to be a part of planning for that weekend. Um, we don't want to do it in isolation. We want For the to weekend celebrating the fifth annual uprising of Ferguson. Ferguson? Okay. Yeah, so we want other org So we're um, beginning that. Uh, we do have some resources for it, but we do want to work in uh, uh, we want to work with other organizations. Uh, we want to work with other organizations that we can put on the list to ensure that they get reparations for their grassroots organization. Well, uh, let me just uh, congratulate you on your, uh, you know, involvement. Uh, please stay the course. And, uh, you know, of course, uh, from one organization, Universe African People's Organization, to what uh, your organization, we uh, stand in solidarity and most definitely would like to work with the planning uh, of that fifth annual celebration yes. in that we were very involved also yes. during that uprising. Yes. On that note, uh, you've been listening to uh, Ms., uh, uh, part of conversation with Zaki Baruti with Ms. Christine Hendricks. Uh, again, uh, may God bless each and every one of uh, my listeners, as well as I encourage everybody to join an organization. Very quickly, your phone number again? 314-301-9935. Okay, on that note, you've uh, been listening to uh, Conversations with Zaki Baruti. God bless each and every one of you. Mm -hmm.